I am Naya Guthrie and this is your WTRT Tigers War News update for Thursday, October 10th. In national headlines, Turkey launched its military offensive into northeastern Syria, hammering Kurdish forces with airstrikes and artillery fire. Reports on the ground paint a chaotic scene, with roads gridlocked with people trying to flee to safety. There are also reports of civilian casualties, as some worry that this could be the start of a humanitarian catastrophe. The Kurdish forces have dropped their counter-ISIS operations to focus on the Turkish offensive, raising fears that all this could lead to the resurgence of ISIS. U.S. officials have also expressed concern that thousands of ISIS fighters may escape from prisons in Syria. When asked about that, President Trump essentially shrugged it off, saying it's not America's problem since the fighters would be escaping to Europe. House Democrats are prepping a wave of subpoenas after the Trump administration said it would ignore them. Democrats are now threatening to subpoena associates of Rudy Giuliani and State Department officials. Democrats are also debating whether to hold a vote to formally authorize the impeachment inquiry. The White House and Trump's GOP defenders say until that happens, the entire effort is invalid. The Dems say it's not required under the Constitution. A new poll shows that more than half of U.S. voters want the president impeached and removed from office. Meanwhile, Vice President Joe Biden for the first time called for Trump's impeachment. In other news, long days of darkness continue for almost 800,000 PG&E customers in Northern California. After you the utility giant cut off the power in several counties to reduce the risk of setting off wildfires with electrical lines, the outages could last as long as a week for some. A forecast of strong winds is posing a major fire danger, but the winds are expected to subside tomorrow. The PG&E crews will examine their system for damage and start turning the power back on. In local news, the Savannah Police Department issued a safety advisory reminding the community to be careful when using dating apps. SPD said recently they have responded to several armed robbery cases that stem from meetings set up through dating apps. In the cases, the victims arranged a date and was robbed by unknown males at the location. All incidents have happened late at night or early in the morning, most between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m and the victims were scheduled to meet their date in the dark areas near a residence. In two cases, the victims' cars were stolen. Both have since been recovered. SPD is advising dating app users to always use caution when meeting strangers. Always tell someone where you are going and ask them to check on you at a certain time. SPD also recommends that users always arrange to meet their date in a public place and never arrange to meet late at night or early in the morning. In campus news, on Thursday morning at 11 a.m., Jesse Blanco paid Savannah State University a visit. Blanco appeared at Asa H. Gordon Library and spoke to those in attendance about the process he went through to start his two-time Emmy-nominated show, Eat It and Like It. Blanco came as SSU celebrates Hispanic Heritage Month on campus. Blanco is of Cuban descent and shared his stories about his roots and his work as a journalist. You have to build yourself a foundation and realize early what's important. That's a big challenge because if all your friends are going out and you got to stay home and work on a project, well then there's your crossroads. What, what, is, what matters to you? SSU's Visual and Performing Arts Department presents a group exhibition featuring artwork by distinguished faculty, alumni, and local artists that are friends of the Savannah State family. The exhibition is open in the Kennedy Fine Arts Gallery until Saturday, November 2nd. A reception will be held Thursday, October 24th, 5.30 to 7 p.m. Gallery hours are from Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., free and open to the public. In sports news, in one of their most evenly matched games of the season, the Savannah State volleyball team edged out a 3-2 Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference victory over Benedict College Wednesday night in Tiger Arena. The Lady Tigers improved to 5-10 on the season and 4-7 in conference play. Benedict falls to 10-8 on the season and 4-5 in SIAC action. SSU returns to the court on Friday with a 6 p.m. match against SIAC foe Fort Valley. State and Tiger Arena. Savannah State's men and women's cross country return in action on October 11th in Salisbury, North Carolina at the Livingstone Invitational. They close out the regular season on October 19th in Bluffton, South Carolina at the USCB Sand Shark Invitational. This has been your WTRT Tigers Wars News Update for Thursday, October 10th. I am Naya Guthrie. Thank you for watching.
Thank you.